The following is a Hoop Bowl presentation. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Box Score Breakdown Show brought to you by Hoop Ball. My name is Adrian Benjamins, and I'm joined by Neil Rochlani, who uh, did some traveling today, barely made it in time for the show. You've been, uh, you've been on the road all day, in the air, on the road all day. How are you doing right now, Neil? Yeah, just a little tired. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful I'm back home. Everything worked out just fine, you know, safe and sound. So that's the big thing. Just uh, a lot of time sitting in an airport. Delays, cancellations, new flight, stuff like that, sitting on a runway. But uh, back here, ready to go. Big night of hoops. Um, two days in a row with you. Life is good again. Um, what's up, man? Where do you want to start? What news you got? Uh, what news? Uh, you know what? I think maybe we should talk about DeMarcus Cousins just a little bit. Word came out earlier today that he's been ramping up his workouts, could be targeting a return sometime after Christmas. Neil, that's not too far away, man. I think that's, what, like about four weeks away from now. What do you think? This is a lot sooner than I thought we would see him this season. Are you excited? Is this someone you want to target? I mean, he's likely already being stashed in like every league maybe a really shallow league he could still be floating out there would you be trying to make a trade offer on him what are your thoughts on uh, demarcus cousins yeah i think every league i'm in he's already owned so i don't think <clears throat> unfortunately i could pick him up but well one i was not expecting him to come back until sometime in january i was thinking like mid-january and then even when he does come back i think it's going to be a slow ramp up i may maybe i'm completely wrong about that but I imagine they're going to want to make sure he's good for the playoffs more so than the regular season. So I wouldn't trade for him only because I th I think the owner probably thinks, you know, we think of DeMarcus Cousins, we think of like a top 10, top 15 player, and I think he's not going to deliver that initially. So I wouldn't, um, unless an owner is like desperate and they want to sell and can, tell, can sell him for like a top 50 guy, maybe I would do that, but... Uh, Otherwise, I'm going to just wait and see and see and then uh, hope whoever has him in my leagues, he doesn't do well. But other than that, no, I don't know what else to think. Do you, do you think he's going to start off strong or what do you what are your expectations once he comes back? So I have very low expectations on DeMarcus Cousins, and this is why, Neil, number one. Uh, many, many mouths to feed on this Golden State Warriors team. Neil, you and I, we avoided a lot of the guys on Boston because there's so many guys here, uh, and it's hard to tell each night which guy it is. I think it's going to be very similar in Golden State. It's going to be Durant and Curry going off one night, Clay, Draymond the next night then maybe Cousins one night. So I just don't like the situation. Cousins historically is a big usage guy, and I don't know how that's going to work with other guys on this team like Durant. And uh, so I, that question mark alone makes me kind of lower my expectations. The second and last reason, Neil, an Achilles injury. Uh very hard injury to come back from. We've seen in the past it take a full year for players to really look like themselves after an injury like this. And Neil, in some cases, players are never the same like after an Achilles injury. So those two reasons alone, I have super low expectations. Now, if he was floating on a wire, I would grab him and stash him just to see how it pans out. I definitely do think he's worth owning but I would not be tr like making a huge effort to try to get him. I'm just, uh, I don't think we're going to see full Boogie Cousins until next year. What do you think, Neil? Yeah, I, I, I'm with you there. I think um, we don't know how well he's going to come back and how, how many um, points he's going to put up. And, you know, he's very point dependent, rebound dependent. They've got a lot of guys out there who can do that already. So be curious to see. Also, you, you know, for Big man, he gets a lot of assists, demands the ball. There's um, two other players that demand the ball that, on that team. So 
and and they're probably better than him. So I don't I don't think he can say like you know he can't be like I you have to give it to me because he's got Steph Curry and Kevin Durant. So um, we'll see. I think he'll be a solid fantasy player certainly by February, but he he's certainly not, I don't think, expect him to be first or second round value. Uh, more like mid round values. How I, I would uh, cautiously think he's going to finish up uh, on a per game basis once he gets back. So War- Warriors also. Uh, the starting the past few seasons have become this really safe team when it comes to resting guys, um, bringing guys, you know, slowly. They really their big picture is to win a title. I think they want Boogie to be full strength by playoffs, meaning he's going to see limited minutes. Likely there is no way he's going to be playing in back to backs. So. Uh, like I said, man, they're going to just be ramping them up real slow and just kind of use this season as uh, for him to get his legs so that he can contribute in the playoffs and for a title. So for me, man, it's uh, I'd rather just be watching and see how it pans out. All right. All right. Yeah, I don't think there's Should any we... other uh, major news out there that's worth covering. I mean, it looks like Curry will be back pretty soon. We kind of knew that and. Draymond as well on that team. Um, no other team news or player news from other teams that I'm seeing that's really relevant. Do you see something else? I got n- nada. And uh, we let's see. We got seven games slate tonight. Should we jump into it? Wait, seven? Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight games slate tonight? Eight games slate? Seven games slate. Oh. <laughs> It'd be nice if we could. Seven games slate. All right, I don't enough. know. I can't, can't count. Yeah. It's a, it's been a long day. I can't count. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I believe we've got um, <laughs> seven games slate tonight. Let's jump into it. Why don't you lead us uh, tonight? Please? All right. Um, yes, thanks. I will lead off with the Houston Rockets at Washington Wizards. The Rockets Wizards go to overtime. High scoring game. Um, a lot of great players for DFS tonight. One thirty five, one thirty one was the final. The Rockets fall a little short. I will start with their side and the big line of the night in all of fantasy from what I'm seeing is James Harden. 54 points, 8 rebounds, 13 assists, 13 of 15 from the line, 7 three-pointers and 3 steals. Um, just a fantastic line. If you're playing 9-cat, did uh, crush you in turnovers, had 11 of them. Uh, other starters include Clint Capella, 17 points, 14 rebounds, 2 assists, 8 of 14 shooting um, and four blocks. Uh, Chris Paul was not uh, was not playing tonight. And uh, Adrian, if you can just check on that and see if that was just a little rest, which I think it was. Um, so Eric Gordon started in his place, played 43 minutes, 36 points, two rebounds, two assists, four seven from the line, eight three-pointers. My God. Um, P.J. Tucker had a big uh, minute night, five points, though, just five points, 12 rebounds, three assists including four steals and a three-pointer. James Ennis, 10 points, three rebounds, and assist. One assist, excuse me, and two steals and a three-pointer. Off the bench, uh, Daniel House, someone I'm not too familiar with, played 28 minutes, four points, three rebounds, one assist. Um, No three-pointers, no steals, no blocks, a single turnover. And then uh, Gary Clark, someone who's been talked about for deeper leagues. I have not seen him too much. I'm not in deep enough leagues to really track him. Played 19 minutes tonight, three points, four rebounds on one of three shooting, and um, that is about it. Harden is uh, solidly, you know, um, right there among the top few fantasy players as expected. Currently in nine cat, he is fourth overall on per game basis. Eight cat, um, probably close to. I'm going to just check this out real quick. Adrian, if you can bear with me. Actually, I can't do it without screwing up my screen. So, um, not much to take away here, though. PJ Tucker, I'm still avoiding. James Ennis, I'm still avoiding in my standard leagues. Um, Eric Gordon, I guess, is the one guy I'm, I'm going to be tracking to see if Chris Paul is out for an extended time. Perhaps if I need threes and points, I'll take him. But his field goal percent could really hurt you. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Rockets? It looks like. Chris Paul may have an actual minor 
injury. It's just being called a sore left leg sounds precautionary, but you know, we know Chris Paul um, is, has problems, has had injury problems the past few seasons. So they're likely just being really safe with him, which is why he was out in this one. And uh, man, great googly moogly <laughs> James Harden with uh, just a bonker crazy line here if you add the turnovers he had a triple double tonight um <laughs> <laughs> and i agree with your take man it's it's really surprising that pj tucker in 43 minutes uh only having five points i just wish that this guy could just do just do a little bit more now the 12 rebounds was nice four steals is nice as well but you know if this game didn't go into overtime where he sees 43 minutes, it's likely not a great line here. Uh, I own Clint Capella in a few leagues, and um, I love this guy, man. Love Clint Capella. Love what he's doing this season. And in you really super deep leaguers, and uh, Neil, I'm in some like 2014 Dynasty League, 30 team Dynasty Leagues. Uh, they just brought a guy up from the G League named Daniel House, and he saw 28 minutes tonight. And, Neil, I'm telling you, man, in some of these leagues, you would not believe who is on the wire. It is like nobody in these leagues. I might try to pick this guy up and see if he can stick in this uh, Rockets rotation. But you got to be in a mega deep league to take a look at that guy. All right, Neil, uh, I'm going to move over to the – Washington Wizards side and I am really happy to see Bradley Beal and John Wall both get 30 plus point nights together in the same backcourt on the same night Bradley Beal 32 points two blocks four assists a rebound four threes shot a very efficient 12 of 18 from the field four of five from the line beautiful game from him John Wall with 36 points two blocks 11 assists two threes tonight, t 13 of 23. He did have six turnovers, but I love that he gave you two blocks, two threes, went to the line 11 times, 11 times and hit eight free throws. That's nice. Otto Porter Jr. with 14 points, three steals, two assists, six rebounds, a three, five of 11 from the field, three of four from the line. Uh, not too much going on here in the front court. Kelly Oubre with four points in just 20 minutes. Thomas Bryant, a guy I was hoping could emerge. It's not happening for him. He only got four points in uh, 12 minutes. Off of the bench, Markeith Morris, 22 points, 10 rebounds. Nice double-double here. Two steals and assists in 41 minutes. So, you know... Even though Bryant and Oubre got the start, it was Morris that played the majority of the minutes in this front court here. Shot a very efficient 8 of 12 from the field. He added 3 of 4 from downtown, 3 of 4 from the line. Great game from Keith. Uh, Jeff Green with a nice game here 13 points, 3 assists, 4 rebounds. Uh, Thomas Sadoransky's been playing pretty well off the bench lately. Didn't happen here tonight. Only four points in 19 minutes. Not too much else to talk about here, Neil. What are your thoughts on the Washington Wizards? Yeah, it's good to see them. <clears throat> like you said, both their stars getting a, a solid night tonight, um, splitting, splitting the uh, scoring responsibilities. I, I'm still waiting to see what happens with this team in terms of any trades that are made and um, how that shakes out, not really making any moves to get any of these players yet, like Oubre, um, Sadoransky. Let's see if Sadoransky gets moved somewhere. Maybe they're playing him to try to put him in with a package to trade him, and uh, perhaps he gets a bigger role somewhere else. I think he's he's definitely good enough if he gets enough minutes to put up value, like we saw at the end of last season. So keep an eye on him if that happens. Oubre, if he moves into the starting lineup, obviously becomes – much more fantasy valuable. Um, Markeith Morris is now coming off the bench, but doesn't seem to really hurt him. He still played 41 minutes in this overtime game and put up a decent line. Um, he may have been dropped in some leagues, so look for him if that's the case. I think he'll be fantasy worthy in 20, uh, excuse me, 12 team leagues. If um, especially if there's some moves here and, and someone in the starting lineup gets uh, shipped off, so. That's kind of what I'm watching for still to see if there's are any changes. This team has kind of turned things around a little bit. They look like they're playing hard 
you know, had a nice win tonight against the very good Rockets team. So perhaps there won't be any changes, but um, a couple of losses in a row, and that could change everything right away back again. So we'll see where it goes. All right. Should I head over to game two? Yes, sir. All right. I got the Milwaukee Bucks against the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, Milwaukee uh, made a valiant effort to come back in this game. Charlotte was up big, and then Milwaukee brought it back to three points. It fell 107 to 110. Start with Giannis. He played 40 minutes, 20 points, 13 rebounds, nine assists, uh, five of seven to the line. Still kind of hurt you a little bit there in a single three pointer, but did have a steal on three blocks. And only one turnover tonight, which is great for him. Um, their second best fantasy player, Chris Middleton. Um, 14 points, 9 rebounds, 2 assists. Struggled, though, from the field, unusually so. 4 of 18 from there. 3 of 3 from the line, 3 three-pointers, 2 steals. Eric Bledsoe, 17, 1 and 4 with um, 4 three-pointers, 2 steals. He's having a solid season. Um, Brooke Lopez, someone we expected to have a bounce-back year, now got a starting role in Milwaukee. Played 27 minutes. There was times when this team went a little small, so he doesn't always get that high starters minutes, but he does get solid minutes tonight, 15 points, eight rebounds, um, can knock down a three-pointer, knock down one and had a block as well. Malcolm Brogdon has been picking it up a re- more recently. Tonight had a solid game, eight points, 11, or excuse me, 11 points, eight rebounds, six assists. Did struggle from a shoot from the uh, field, four of 16 from the field, two of two from the line, including a three-pointer and two steals. Um, And then Pat Connaughton, someone who has been getting minutes when Brooke goes to the bench, and he played 26 minutes, 15 points, five rebounds, two assists. I don't know if you own this guy anywhere in your deeper leagues, Adrian, or you're watching him. He's someone who's still a little bit off my radar at 168 overall, nine cat. Um, Other than that, their starting five is pretty much locked and loaded and worth owning. He's the one guy I would watch, I guess, if he starts to get high 20 minutes and can deliver maybe becomes relevant in um, 14-team leagues. Uh, not much else tonight. Everyone played well. Um, just uh, came up a little short against Charlotte. All right, no thoughts from me on the Bucks. I'm going to jump over to the Charlotte Hornets. And, Neil, when I see Jeremy Lamb's line of 21 points, two steals, four assists, eight rebounds, two threes, eight of 15 from the field, three of four from the line, it makes me very happy that I am no longer playing you in our <laughs> other league. Thank goodness. Uh, Kemba Walker with 21 points, two steals, five assists, six rebounds, uh, three of 12 from the field. So did not shoot well from the field, but shot a pretty decent 13 of 16 from the line, two of six from downtown. So the shooting is ugly, but you'll still take that line from him. Marvin Williams kind of on a little hot streak here. 16 points, one steal with eight eight rebounds, four threes tonight, six of 11 from the field. I might take a look at this guy in some deep leagues, see if he's still sitting there. He's, He's looked pretty good lately, and the minutes are nice, and the usage has been pretty good of late. So, um, uh, you know, he's... I don't think I trust him for like rest of season, but maybe a guy you ride while he's on this hot streak here. Uh, Nicholas Batum with a letdown here, seven points in 34 minutes. He added a steal, two assists, three rebounds, three of four from the field, uh, one three tonight, didn't go to the line. Cody Zeller just continuing to disappoint in a start with eight points in just 19 minutes. Um, some nice lines off the bench. Uh, Parker with 15 points, six assists. Uh, Monk only seven points in 21 minutes. Kid Gilchrist coming back uh, from an injury, seven points in just 18 minutes. Miles Bridges, it hasn't been happening for him, only five points in 11 minutes. Kaminsky, we're not worried about. Biombo's out right now. Hernan Gomez is out right now. What do you think of the Charlotte Hornets, Neil? Sorry there, I was on mute for a second. Um, yeah, the only thing that interests me is Marvin Williams. You know, everyone else I kind of know. Um, I do own Batum in one league, and I'm, I haven't been starting him. He's been really disappointing this year and uh, fading um, on me as well. 
tonight kind of a, a just a very pedestrian line and uh like but what you said with williams he has been playing well he's been having a positive plus minus and these close games and clearly he he's out there a lot in competitive games so he might be worth a look i'm not going to add him anytime soon you know he's someone who can get a three-pointer or two can get a block and a steal get good um or at least solid percentages uh, doesn't kill you really there. So I don't, um, I, I, I don't, I don't want to, uh, just say he's not going to be, he's kind of boring, but he's just, he doesn't do enough for me right now. I'll watch him and perhaps we'll add him if, um, he starts to continue going. I have another play I'll get to later that I added that I'm really happy about, but, and it's kind of more like a, well, not like Marvin Williams, but someone who's kind of on the fringe. So anyway, I'm just kind of watching him and Batum, I'm no longer starting because I think he's fading. Uh, real quick, I want to mention Marvin Williams. Uh, you know, tonight, 16 and 8. Neil, the last game, which was just the other night, 20 points, 13 rebounds. So this is two games in a row uh, f- flirting with the double double. Third game in a row, he's played over 30 minutes. We know in past seasons, he's had some uh, decent fantasy value due to his ability to uh, do some rebounding, hit threes. So um, somebody to keep an eye on for sure. All right, Neil, what happened on the other side? Oh, wait, you did the other side of this game already. I, should we move over to yeah. the next game? Let's go to game three. I've got um, Boston... Is this correct? Boston, New Orleans. Um, Celtics go in to New Orleans to win 124-107. Let's see who dominate tonight. Um, my money is on Kyrie Irving because I've already seen this line. <laughs> uh, 26 points, 5 rebounds, 10 assists, one for, one for the line, 5 three-pointers, 5 steals. What a find. This guy is back in the top 10, locked and loaded. I want to say he is... Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm seeing 11 and 9 cat. I tend to play more 8 cat. So um, I don't know where he is there, but I know he's he's uh, he's flirting with the top 10 if he's not already in there. Uh, the other guy who had a great night, Jason Tatum, 19 points, or excuse me, 20 points, 7 rebounds, 1 assist, 4 4 from the line, 2 3 pointers, 3 steals, and a block. Marcus Morris gets to start, 19 points, 11 rebounds, 3 assists, 8 of 14 from the field, 3 3 pointers. Uh, Marcus Smart as well in the starting lineup uh, just had eight points, two rebounds, five assists on three of eight shooting. Did have a steal, two three pointers, and a block. Al Horford. Wow, Adrian, everyone's scoring tonight. Well, <laughs> what do we say about Boston? Tonight's the anomaly: twenty points, four rebounds, three assists, um, three steals, and a block. Three of four from the line. Off the bench, Hayward. This is where he has been relegated to. Just played twenty three minutes, five four and four. Um, with a three-pointer, a steal, and a block. Very pedestrian night. Uh, Terry Rozier plays 19 minutes, gets 14, 2, and 1. And Aaron Baines, um, 20 minutes, 7, 5, and 0. You know, I own Gordon Hayward in the league, and I don't know what to do about him. I'm, You know, it's it's uh, unlimited games played, so I'm playing him every game. He's currently outside the top 100. Not really... Not, I really don't want to sell low on him, so I'm going to just hope he continues to get... It's, it's one of these things where he's going to get better throughout the year, and his numbers will reflect that, but I'm not sure uh, if I believe it. Uh, we'll see. It doesn't look like he has the same sort of um, leap as he once did. Um, Marcus Morris having a great night in uh, starting, and um, we'll see if that's going to be sticking around for a while. And then also um, good nights for Horford and Tatum. Uh, they're kind of returning a little below their, their draft value, and I think that's where they're going to stay. Any thoughts on Boston? Oh, I'm sorry. Jalen Brown is, is out. Yeah, I'm, I wasn't even yeah. paying attention. Go ahead. This is a real disappointing night if you own Gordon Hayward because with Jalen Brown out, you thought that maybe Gordon Hayward would see a boost. And uh, you know, for him to just get 23 minutes off the bench in a close game, uh, well, I mean, I guess it was somewhat close. But um, and they And the big thing here, Neil, is they got the victory. So – you know, what if the coaching staff feels like, hey, bringing Hayward off the bench in limited minutes is kind of working out for this team. Well, let's continue to do this. So you really don't like to see this team uh, have so much success 
with Hayward in this type of role. But, you know, Neil, I, I had said in previous nights that I thought the move to the bench could be good for Hayward because it looked like he was still going to see starter type minutes. And I thought that he could play well against the second units of other teams. So I still think uh, if you have Hayward, you got to stick with him. I also think, you know, it takes time to work your way back from that from missing that whole season that he missed last year. So I'm hoping he could get better as the year goes on. So just hang tight if you own Gordon Hayward, guys. All right, I'm going to move over to the Pelican side and uh, going to start with Anthony Davis. 27 points, three blocks, three steals, five assists, 16 rebounds, eight of 19 from the field. No threes tonight, but shot 11 to 12 from the line. I mean, this guy just is outstanding, just amazing. Drew Holiday with 13 points, a block, three steals, seven assists, six rebounds, four of eight from the field, one three, four four from the line. If I had one gripe about Drew tonight, he did have eight turnovers, so that's kind of a stinker there. Mirotic with 25 points. No defensive stats, no assists, but he did have five rebounds. Six threes tonight is outstanding. Six of 11 from downtown, to be exact. He was eight of 15 from the field, three of three from the line. Etwan Moore, the shot was not there tonight, was only two of seven for five points. Um, let's see here. Uh, not too much else to talk about. Randall. Julius Randle only got 21 minutes, had 15 points, a block, a steal, two assists, five rebounds, and uh, not too much else here. Neil, what are your thoughts on the uh, Pelicans? You've got to be glad you're still not playing me because I have Anthony Davis in that league as well, <laughs> and he is my man crush, my God. What a phenomenal basketball player. It's, it's unfortunate they uh, get the loss tonight, though. I like to see these guys play well and See if they can make it back into the playoffs. Um, not a whole lot to take away from this line. Etwan Moore is someone that I, you know, I need a three uh, a scorer. Um, did not go with Etwan Moore because of these games like this. You know, it's just um, I, I'm very impatient, and so if I would have picked him up and started him, Adrian, I would have just thrown something against the wall and dropped him the next day. I'm not uh, very emotional when it comes to this game, but anyway. Um, I'm curious to see um, if uh, this is an anomaly or something of a trend because clearly he is someone who, by the numbers, um, should be owned in a 12, 12 team league. But he's someone who just kind of bores me, and I'm worried that he might uh, drop a little bit. You know, the difference between 100 and 150 is not that big in terms of fantasy value. Um, and uh, a few bad games, and he can slide right out of the, the you know 125 range. So we'll see what happens. Um, good to see AD back. He's out. He was out a couple games last week, and glad to see him back and playing well. So happy for that. I will go on to. I think I skipped a game. So yes, I, I think we missed the Minnesota yeah. Timberwolves and the Cleveland Cavs. Yeah, I'll take uh, Minnesota here because I have two of their players, and um, I've got uh, their big cat, Mister Towns. He had twenty-one points, ten rebounds, one assist. Two three-pointers, a steal, no blocks for him tonight. Um, he's starting to get those uh, stat lines we we come to expect from him without Jimmy Butler getting the, you know plenty of shots tonight. Nineteen attempts, and also took uh, just got to the line though once tonight. I mean twice tonight. Excuse me. Uh, the guy who I'm really now in love with is Robert Covington. Someone I was not big on coming the season, but since. He started off pretty strong, and he's just getting stronger. 24 points, 7 rebounds, 1 assist, 4 or 5 from the line, 4 three-pointers, 2 steals, 2 blocks, 39 minutes against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, Jeff Teague, 13 points, 2 rebounds, 6 assists, 3 or 5 from the line, um, which is rare for him. He's a very good foul shooter. A steal, and but 3 blocks. Great to see that. Um, Andrew Wiggins, this is more what we come to expect from him. 11 points, three rebounds, three assists, uh, a three pointer, two steals and two blocks. He had this really great run once, uh, Butler left. I think that shine is off though. He's, he's not doing great. He's around a hundredth, 
uh, I'm seeing are 110th and 9 cat, and I think even worse than 8 cat on a per game basis since the turnovers are are positive here. So I he's not someone that I think has a lot of fantasy value, a lot because of his field goal percent. Tonight, he shot 4 11 from the field. Taj Gibson played 30 minutes, 7 points, 8 rebounds, 2 assists, a steal. Off the bench, Derrick Rose played 29 minutes, 12 points, a rebound, 4 assists, and um, no three-pointers and a block. Sarich, only 18 minutes tonight, 9.6 rebounds, and no defensive stats, no threes, no turnovers. Um, the one thing we were watching here, or the one thing I've been watching, is how the Sarich, um, um Taj Gibson split goes. Um, I thought Sarich was going to start to win this. I Obviously, it's dependent on the night who they're playing, the matchups, and, of course, then uh, how each person plays. And I think that just might be the case going forward. I don't think anyone's going to win this role, and I think because of that, neither one's really going to have much fantasy value. Um, Tosh is still in the top 100 in nine cap, but I think that's going to change pretty soon. Um, and uh, I, I I recommend um, if you can sell, sell on them and get fair value. If not, I guess just wait and see. Uh, you have any thoughts on the Timberwolves? Neil, I, like you, was not high on Robert Covington coming into the year. And if you drafted Covington, you got to be jumping for joy. Uh, not a lot of people realize that he would be such a huge winner from the trade, sending him to this Timberwolves team where he is just a perfect fit on this team. Uh, Neil, his usage has jumped up since joining the Timberwolves. I feel like since he's joined this team he plays more minutes than anyone on this team because Tibbs really relies on him to uh to anchor the defense and he can also hit threes which he added four threes to here here tonight Neil Covington is sitting currently in nine category leagues in second round value as player number 21 uh if you drafted him he could be a league winner for you this year. And uh, it's just, it's just outstanding. And I like you was not high on him. So I'm eating a lot of crow by missing out on him. All right, man. Um, I'm going to jump over to the Cleveland Cavs side and I'm going to, first off, I'm going to look at Tristan Thompson, who I feel has been pretty solid, uh, late round guy and I think he's going to be pretty dependable for rest of season all he does is get points and rebounds but he does it pretty well 16 points and 11 boards tonight on an efficient 70 percent shooting from the field seven of ten two and two from the line you like that one steal one block as well pretty happy to see that Colin Sexton here um the shooting wasn't great he only shot five and 19 for 11 points no defensive stats, which is disappointing, but I love that he got seven boards, four assists. I hope he can keep up in contributing and uh, boards and assists, and I think he could be good for some steals, and I think this guy can improve. You know, I hear a lot of uh, mixed uh, mixed feelings about Colin Sexton. Some people are high on him. Some people are low on him. I think, hey— this is a guy that you likely picked up off the wire or you spent your last draft pick on. I think he's going to end up returning some late round value for end of season. So uh, my expectations are still low, but I think he's still a guy you can count on at the end of your roster. Neil, Larry Nance Jr. Hello. This is what we've been waiting for, man. Starting, getting 38 minutes, uh, 12 points, 7 assists. Uh, eight rebounds, two blocks, one steals, five of ten from the field. Didn't have a three tonight, but I don't care, man. I love, I love seeing him get big minutes. I love he took ten shots. I'm loving that he contributed in rebounds, assists, and the defensive stats. This is what we've been waiting for. Double check that Larry Nance Jr. is not floating on your wire. He can fill a much-needed void on this team, and uh, he could be a great add if he's still sitting there. Rodney Hood with 20 points, three assists, two rebounds, one steal, two threes tonight. He he shot eight of 16. Um, Seti Osman, a disappointment after having some pretty good games lately. He only shot three of 12. So if you're going to try to be optimistic and look at the bright side, 
He still started. He saw 30 minutes. The usage still looked nice. Just the shot was not falling tonight. So he's, he's still got eight points, one steal, two assists, six rebounds. I'm sticking with Osman. It's been a bumpy ride, but I'm sticking with him. Uh, Kyle Korver, 22 points in 22 minutes. Uh, Jordan Clarkson, somewhat of a letdown game here, only four points in 22 minutes. Neil, what are your thoughts on the Cleveland Cavs? Oh, actually, real quick before you go, I was very disappointed to see David Nwaba miss this game. He started the last game. I actually added him in some really deep leagues, and I wanted to see if he can add on his game last time, but he's out in this one. So that was really disappointing. Neil, what do you think about this team? All right, here's where my impatience really hurt me. Um, I, you know, I drafted Larry Nance Jr. in one of my leagues, and this also goes to my inability to manage multiple leagues at the same time. I, Adrian, I was so excited when I saw this stat line, and then I went to all my teams, and I realized he's no longer owned on any of my teams. I dropped him at some point along the way and picked up someone else, and... Uh, so happy, though, that he's finally getting an opportunity to show that this guy can deliver. I thought this year was going to be great once Kevin Love went down. Tonight is what we wanted. He is still uh, you know, doing okay before tonight's line, 117 and 9 cat, and this is just going to get better. We'll see if uh, the Nwaba injury, if he gets back in there, if that takes away from his usage. But um, happy for Larry Nance. I think... Um, if you're like me, you'd probably like would have dropped him and then picked him back up and then one bad game dropped him again. But I think you can hold on to him for a little while and see what happens. He certainly has a lot of upside if this is going to continue. Um, I also like um, what you said about Sexton. I know his his ranking isn't great, but this guy is. I just um, he he they want this guy to be their their future, and he's going to get a lot of run, and he may just struggle a little bit from the field. But he's going to um, put up points if you need points. He's going to put up, I think his assists are going to get better. And I think his, his free throw percentage is fan- phenomenal, um, 90% on 2.8 free throws. And that's going to go up. Um, he's going to start attacking a lot more. We know he loves to do that as the season goes on. And he's going to knock a lot of those free throws down. And I think his defensive stats have to come up. I mean, he's a point guard. Point four is so low. He's going to come up a little bit. So, like, like you said, he's not going to be um, – you know, like a, a top hundred guy, maybe, but or a top seventy five guy, but somewhere between you know one and one one fifty, and he's going to do some good stats that are hard to find in late rounds. So, um, I like him, yeah, and especially if you're in a keeper league, I think he could be good next year. All right, uh, the next game, I you have anything else to add, or should I go on to the next game? Love your take on Sexton, and I love that you said in a keeper league could be good next year, Neil Heat. Reminds me a lot of uh, De'Aaron Fox, who we're seeing take that sophomore jump and leap in improvement. So it's not, uh, it wouldn't be a big surprise to see Sexton do something similar next year. We've seen a lot of these really uh, guys come out in their year two, really take a leap. You know, we're so used to guys coming in year one and just making a huge impact, which we have from, again, uh, like a handful of guys this year. But in the NBA, it usually takes a few years. So. If this guy is going to be a good NBA player, it's not surprising. It would not be surprising to see him have a big jump from year one to year two. Um, all right, let's go over to – I've got San Antonio Spurs, Chicago. Um, I'll do the, the uh, Spurs side. They come in, and uh, this is just so typical, Adrian. Like, Chicago is up in this game, but we – I wouldn't say we. I just knew the Spurs were going to pull it out. It's like – this is like the class of case of, like, the good team always finds a way to win, and the bad team always finds a way to lose. Uh, the Spurs win 108-107, um, led by um, uh, LaMarcus Aldridge, 20 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists, 8 of 12 shooting, 4 of 5 from the line, 2 steals and 2 blocks. DeMar DeRozan, 21 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists, um, no 3-pointers tonight, no steals, no blocks. Rudy Gay uh, just played 17 minutes. Eight points, three rebounds, two assists. I'm not seeing any notes here on him being injured, so let's hope it's uh, had three fouls. Maybe that was it. Dante Cunningham got 23 minutes. Someone who is starting but not really worth owning. Tonight, 2.7 rebounds, no assists, and no steals, no blocks, no threes. 
Brent Forbes also starting uh, 13 points, two rebounds, six assists, um, zero steals, zero blocks. Did have three three pointers. Off the bench, Bonali played 24 minutes. Um, actually, Derek White had a decent game. I mean, I shouldn't say decent. He had a better game than what we've been seeing recently. Eight points, six rebounds, one assist, uh, two three pointers, two steals. Patty Mills, 17 points. He can do this sometimes because he shoots well tonight. 7 of 10 from the field, a rebound, two assists, and uh, two three-pointers and a steal. Bertrands plays 18 minutes, and Portal plays uh, 18 minutes as well. Someone who clearly has not um, come into his own just yet there in San Antonio. I will say that um, um, the one thing that I am curious about is Rudy Gay only getting the 17 minutes. I, I need to figure out what really happened. Uh, other than that, not a whole lot to take away from this game. Oh, the one thing I was going to say, which is not even basketball related, but I want to bring it up. Really surprised that Popovich mentioned that Kawhi was not a leader on that team. Uh, that seemed kind of weird for, to me. Um, I'm not sure why he said that. Obviously, they had a lot of issues last year between the two camps, but um, not something I expect Popovich to say. Anyway, uh, that's all I've got. What are your thoughts on the Spurs? I'm hearing that no injury issues for Rudy Gay. He did get into some early foul trouble and maybe possible that Coach Popovich limited his minutes by design to get him some rest. So um, I, I wouldn't read too much into it. I don't think it's anything. I think it was just uh, kind of an anomaly, just uh, nothing major. And then uh, Bryn Forbes has my attention, and uh, he's floating on the wire in a few of my leagues 13 and 6 tonight, and uh, he's got my attention. I'm going to keep an eye on this guy. That's all I got, Neil. I'm going to move over to the other side, and I know that you specifically picked the Spurs so that you would not have to say Ryan Arcidio Kono. <laughs> I don't know how to say that, man. I know you purposely gave me the bull so that you wouldn't have to say that name, but I'm going to start with uh, Ryan A. I'm going to call him 22 points, two steals, two assists, four rebounds, eight of 12 from the field, four of six from downtown, two of two from the line. Um, I don't know. I'm just gonna watch him. I I don't know, Neil. I don't. I'm not gonna say pick him up because he's. I don't really think he's done anything since tonight. But this is a pretty good line from him. Um, Holiday, Justin Holiday, 17 points, two blocks, four assists, six rebounds, uh, six of ten from the field, five of eight from three point range. Uh, Neil, I gotta look this up super quick. Uh, Justin Holiday is currently sitting at rank 28 in nine category leagues, third round value. This is absolutely crazy. Um, you guys, they're going to get Chris Dunn back soon. They're going to get Bobby Portis back soon. Uh, Lori Marketing is ramping up. I think if you could sell high on Justin Holiday, I would do it just because the landscape of this team is going to change. Uh, quite a bit, and the usage for Holiday could change here. Um, Zach Levine with a nice game. 28 points, 7 assists with 8 rebounds, 3 of 8 from downtown. He only shot 10 of 26 from the field, but he did also shoot 5 of 6 from the line. Wendell Carter Jr. only saw 24 minutes here. I'm guessing he got in a foul trouble. I see 5 fouls here. So he added eight points, a steal, a block, one assist, six rebounds, four of 11 from the field. I am not worried about Wendell Carter Jr. In fact, uh, he's had a couple of down games lately. If you could maybe try to uh, float a buy low offer on him, I'm sure the owner likely is not looking to move him. But hey, just float it out there and see what happens. Nothing off of the bench here. No one really contributing on the bench. Neil, what are your thoughts on your Chicago Bulls? Um, I've been riding Justin Holiday in one of my leagues. So happy I picked him up. Um, that was a hoop ball recommendation. I think straight from Aaron Bruski. Um, he said on a show, maybe it was Dan, one of those guys, and it's been phenomenal. Um, he's been uh, he's been just a dream come true. But like you said, he his usage will definitely go down. He may he may still get this minutes. Um, I think he's still going to start. Uh, but he won't take as many shots, and his other stats will come down a bit as well. So 
Don't expect this to hold. But he's, I think he still could remain, you know, top 100-ish. We'll see how that goes. Um, Jabari Parker's the other one I picked up. You know, he had four games, four really good games in a row, three really good games in a row. And tonight he delivered again. Um, I'm going to ride him as well and see what happens uh, once uh, these other guys come back. I, I still think Parker could be useful only because his percentages t- tend to be solid. And uh, he can do every other category as well. So um, I'm going to ride him and see how that goes as well. I never thought I'd be only owning two bulls, uh, Adrian, <laughs> on my fantasy <laughs> team, uh, not named Carter Jr. or Levine or the guy I can't pronounce. But um, let's see where it goes. Um, they definitely have a fantasy-friendly sort of offense, so they could uh, continue to pick up points. All right, uh, let's go on to Indiana, Utah. Utah off a of back-to-back and getting spanked at home. My gosh, to Indiana, 121-88. This team has just not been playing up to what I expected. Indiana gets a nice win here. I'll start with their side. Um, Let's see. uh, Oladipo still out. So they started with uh, Evans and Collison in the backcourt. Collison got 26 minutes, 8 points, 3 rebounds, 11 assists. Four steals, uh, no three pointers. Tyreek Evans, 14, one and two, with a three pointer and a steal. Miles Turner had a solid night, 16, four rebounds, four assists, seven of eight shooting, two steals, two blocks. Uh, Bojan Bogdanovic, 15 points, five rebounds, four assists, uh, two three pointers, a steal. Thaddeus Young, very uh, light line, just six points, two rebounds, no assists, no three pointers. No blocks, did have two steals. Off the bench, someone who you might want to start looking at, Corey Joseph, 13 points, three rebounds, uh, three three three-pointers, a steal, and a block. He's been creeping up the ranks in the absence of Odipo. We'll see how long that lasts. And then their main guy off the bench, uh, DeMontis Sabonis, 13 points, 10 rebounds, six assists. Currently their second highest-rated player after Odipo. Uh, did add a block and a steal tonight. Not sure um, what to make of the Oladipo injury. I, I, from what I hear, it's nothing. It's a knee, but it's not serious, Adrian. Unless um, you're going to contradict me here by finding something else out, um, and that will certainly hurt Joseph Collinson and Evans once he's back. But uh, good to see Indiana get a win on the road. This is a team that I wasn't sure what's going to happen this year with them. They, they had a big jump last year. I, I thought they might get even better this year with their additions in the offseason. They're kind of holding form, but a nice win here tonight. Uh, not much on the fantasy side. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Pacers? Victor Oladipo, I'm hearing it's a sore right knee. Uh, I believe the second game he's missed here. So uh, I'd expect him back pretty soon. I own him in a few leagues, my main home league, and I need him desperately. So my fingers are crossed that maybe we see him in the next one. So if he does happen to miss one more game, I would think he would be back pretty soon here. Uh, And then uh, not a lot of thoughts. I think you covered pretty much everything. Uh, I own Sabonis in a few leagues, and he's been pretty solid he only got 23 minutes tonight off the bench, but still had 13, 10, and 6. And I love this guy, man. He's been great. I'm going to go over to the to the very disappointing Utah Jazz side, man. And, Neil, it is ugly over here, man. Uh, all starters in the minus category. But I'm going to start with uh, Rudy Gobert, who had 12 points, uh, 6 rebounds, 2 blocks, 6 to 7 from the field. Favors getting the start in this one, only getting 24 minutes, likely due to the blowout factor. 13 points, one block, eight rebounds. Joe Ingles with 10 points, five steals is nice. Uh, Three assists, two rebounds, and two threes, four or ten from the field. Ricky Rubio, pretty disappointing line here. He only shot two of eight for six points, one steal. He did have eight assists, which is nice. Three rebounds from him. Off the bench, there is nothing going on here, man. And this team has been pretty disappointing. Donovan Mitchell included. Didn't play in this one. He's likely going to miss a few more games, too, uh, due to injury. Uh, Doesn't sound like anything serious, but likely going to be out just for a little bit. But, man, even he's been pretty disappointing. 
Neil, what are your thoughts on this Utah Jazz team? Yeah, I would have never have guessed that uh, Donovan Mitchell would be 71st on a per-game basis in 9-cat. Um, really disappointing. Uh, Go Bears are highest at 32nd. Rubio's outside the top 100. Um, I have Ingles in a league. I still like him. Uh, he has not returned the value I expected. All these guys have been disappointing this year. It's um, It's a little unfortunate. I thought... We all knew they had a good defense, which has not really lived up to the expectations this year, but I thought their offense would take a big step forward with Mitchell uh, being that guy who could really drive them forward. And then I thought, you know, Exum, he's, he's someone who can produce off the bench. Um, I thought Gobert would maybe take a step forward offensively. Um, it just hasn't happened for this team, unfortunately. And tonight's just uh, another example of how individually each player is struggling to deliver their uh, fantasy value. Um so, not, nothing happy to say, Adrian. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, hey, just a little frustrated with the the jazz players. Donovan Mitchell, one of my biggest whiffs of the year, and you know, luckily, actually, out of the eleven leagues I'm in, I actually only drafted him in one. So I don't know how that happened, but it was a blessing in disguise, man, because he. I don't think he's going to return anywhere near the second round value that I drafted him in in my home league, and um. I'd like to also add it's a rib contusion for Donovan Mitchell. Um, I should have been more specific about his injury. So um, missed his second straight game. And um, I think he's going to probably miss a few games, man. Ribs take a little while. It's a sensitive area. And so uh, I think he could miss a few more here. All right, um, Neil, I'm seeing one more game that's still kind of uh, in the third quarter here, so you may have to tackle this one without me. That That is so disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> I know you got to go. You've got, uh, you've got more important things to, to um, pay attention to, so I will be back. So why don't you sign off, and I'll be back with the final game of the night. Thank you guys for listening and supporting the show, as always. Hit me up at Twitter. I'm at Adrian Benjamins. Love to hear from you guys. Thanks so much. And Neil will be back for the last game of the night. All right. On to the last game of the evening. Golden State holds off a very frisky Orlando team, 116 to 110. Orlando actually led throughout. Um, had a great second quarter. Golden State came back in the third quarter then. Um, took it in the end. On the Orlando side, let's start off with uh, Aaron Gordon, who got injured um, and left the game and uh, did not return with some lower back pain. I do not think it's serious, but we'll find out more later. He ended up with zero points, uh, took six shots, missed all of them, four rebounds, one assist, two um, over two from three-point land, a steal, a block, two turnovers. This has really been um, just another disappointing year for Mr. Gordon, I thought he could bounce back and have. He's been 51st overall in eight cat, and it just doesn't even seem that good. Um, I'm not sure uh, his percentages are going to hold 48%, 49% from the field. That could go down a little bit after this game, but even going forward, I'm nervous about that. So I think he'll finish below 50th in eight cat. Um, the big player on this team, and who's been just Amazing has been Vucevic, uh, 30 points tonight, 12 rebounds, six assists, shooting a uh, phenomenal 55% from the field. That, I think, can continue. Five to six from the line tonight, uh, 85% on the year. Three-pointer, averaging one a game. He also had a steal, no blocks, but averaging a block a game as well. Currently 12th over or per game in ACAT. I um, I would hold on to him. I don't think you can trade him for that much value. You could probably trade him for, um, I don't know, second round value maybe to someone. But I think he might continue to to be in the first round or or late or um late um early second late second round value. And I don't again think you can get what you um what he's going to deliver. So I would hold on to him. Uh, DJ Augustine. On the cusp here of being owned tonight, had nine points, four rebounds, nine assists. Shot three of ten from the field, a three-pointer, two steals. You know, I need a point guard in one of my leagues. I think I'm going to hold off on him still. He does not really produce many points, uh, something that I need. And if you need points, obviously, doesn't do it there. The assists are really the only thing that's um, 
sort of helping him along. He's a negative in every other category except free throw percent. So there's only two positive categories. He helps you in. If you can buffer these other ones, I guess he might be worth it if you're in a desperate need for a point guard. Uh, Evan Fournier just um, having a mediocre season uh, tonight. Nine points, one rebound, three assists on four of 14 shooting, one three-pointer, a steal, no blocks, and a turnover, and eight cat. He is at 102. I thought he could finish more around 80 to 90 this year in ACAT. I think so. This 100 is pretty much in line there. Um, a little worse than I thought he'd do this season. Although Orlando as a team is better than I thought this season. Uh, that's really it. Jonathan Simmons also got the start tonight um, and um, did not really produce very much. Uh, Windu did not um, get the start. He's out of the lineup, played just three minutes. Um, let's see. Simmons in a starting role, six points, one rebound, four assists, a steal. Uh, not really worth owning. Uh, you know, he'd have to have a lot of injuries in front of him before you thought to pick him up. Um, Jonathan Isaac, the guy we talk about a lot here at Hoopball, someone who I was big on and then slowly have been just losing interest over the last couple weeks. And tonight had 15 points, four rebounds, uh, five and nine shooting. Three out of three from three-point land and a steal. I, despite a slight turnaround tonight, I am still not interested. Only because he went three of three from three-point range. And if he goes one of three, which is more in line with how he shoots and most people shoot from three-point range, it's a much different stat line. It's it's nine, four, and um, a steal. So... Clearly, the potential has been there for him. He is someone who he got two steals and two blocks a game and can shoot decently like he did tonight, 5 of 9 from the field. And he did get 30 minutes, and he, this is all he did. So uh, I know it's against the Golden State team, but not, not a very good defensive Golden State team um, without Draymond out there and uh, without all, all the uh, pressure Curry puts on that wears out the uh, team on the defensive end and kind of leads to the poorer offense. Anyway, I am uh, still souring on Jonathan Isaac um, and uh, may rather own Terrence Ross. What an odd thing to say, uh, but he did have 28 points, one rebound, two assists, six of seven from the line, uh, four three pointers and two steals. Um, he has been solid. If you need uh Someone off the bench to score. He's been averaging, um, let's see what he's been doing recently. I know full season is just um, 13 and a half points, but he's not, uh, not much more, 12 and 12 points seven over the last two weeks. But uh, he is um, on the fringe of owning and has been consistently around 125 value. So if you need someone who can help you with threes, uh, field goal percent, free throw percent, um, he's your guy. Uh, I, I think there's probably more interesting guys to find out there, but uh, he has uh, been consistently performing at this value. So maybe 14 team leagues, uh, 16 team leagues, more of a, an ad there than standard leagues. Uh, on the Golden State side, um, Kevin Durant has just been crushing it with the absence of Curry, uh, just taking up all the scoring, 49 points, five rebounds, eight assists, 16 of 33 from the field, 13 for 13 from the line, four three-pointers, two steals, two blocks. Currently uh, well inside the top five. Oh, I shouldn't say well inside the top five. He's actually seventh on a per-game basis. An ACAT, uh, this might put him inside the top five, but he's just on the outside looking in right now. Um Let's see. Clay Thompson, 29 points, five rebounds, one assist, one for two from the line, six three pointers, no steals, two blocks, 61st on a per game basis. Yeah, we were a little nervous at, uh, about him this year. And uh, this obviously will help him, but I think he's more of a fourth round guy this year, or a fifth round guy than a third round guy where he may have been drafted. So we'll see where he finishes up. Um, Certainly, the scoring has really picked up in the absence of Curry. Uh, Iguodala also got in a start tonight, 28 minutes, 2 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists. It's not been fantasy-worthy over um, that Clay Thompson number was for the entire for the last two weeks. I just say he's 55th overall in ACAT. And uh, 
yeah, that's um, that's what I expected uh, this season. Uh, back to Andre Iguodala outside of the top 200 for the season. And even when he starts, he doesn't really produce much. Uh, Fantasy-wise, just not relevant anymore. Uh, two points, five rebounds, two assists, two steals. Damian Jones gets to start at center, 16 minutes, just 4-4. Four, four and zero steals, one block. Quinn Cook had a decent night starting a point guard, eight, six, and four with two three-pointers and a steal and a block. He's been streamable, although um, nothing really kind of sexy about it. Um, off the bench, Livingston played 20 minutes, Kevon Looney 20, Jerebko 18. I thought Jerebko might get more minutes with Draymond out, but clearly he's more of a matchup-related start, so... Uh, does not provide any fantasy value in such limited minutes. Jordan Bell still not um, getting much love from the coaching staff. Just 12 minutes for him. Really not much to say um, here except that um, I'll go back. And I misspoke about Kevin Durant. At number seven overall, that was for the last two weeks. He is fourth overall in per game. So inside the top five and I think will continue to be there or right around there. Draymond Green. We'll see what happens uh, once we talked about earlier um, with DeMarcus Cousins coming in. It can't affect Draymond too much in the points because Draymond's only scoring seven points a game. Uh, may affect him on his rebounds at seven and a half rebounds. Uh, that would be the one main category. So Draymond may drop even further right now, 43rd on a per-game basis. Um, and those are the only four really worth owning, those top guys. Uh, I think they're kind of – playing to where we expect them uh draymond you may have thought would be more like 25 to 35 range and he's 43 uh, maybe climbs up a little bit but i think he's actually going to drop as the season goes on with um cousins there taking some rebounds away and i don't see a scoring increasing so um unfortunately a bit of a disappointment for him clay thompson i think maybe a round or two disappointment as well while durant and curry uh better than their draft position um that is all for tonight's box score breakdown um thanks for everyone for listening i uh, just want to say uh we appreciate any comments feedback um that you have you can reach me on twitter at ball with neil b-a-l b-a-l-l w-i-t-h n-e-i-l and we'll talk to you tomorrow night This has been a Hoop Ball presentation.